Hello, this is a tutorial video for using video analysis in Logger Pro. Uh, we're going to be looking at an example video here from the coffee filter terminal velocity lab, and I'm going to show you how to do the video analysis. Um, it's a really good tool for analyzing something that's moving that you can capture in video, especially if it's hard to measure, uh, more impossible to measure with something like a motion sensor, um, or uh, for whatever reason you want to take data with a with a video. Sometimes it's got advantages, certainly. So here's how we're gonna do it. I have, the first thing you need to do is take the video um, and get it on your computer. So once I put the video up here, we can talk about a couple important things to do when you take the video. But let's just look at this. So when you have a video on your computer, uh, you need the video file. You're gonna go to Insert Movie in Logger Pro. And then, you know, wherever you have it. So for this kind of lab, you would need 25 different individual videos, or maybe we can talk about it. You could maybe have five different videos um, where you analyze something that's been dropped five times in one in one video. But you'll have probably a couple different videos, so you might number them, you know, level one, trial one, however you want to do it. Um, all right, so I'm just double clicking on that to open up the video file. Logger Pro will take a second to load it. Uh, a couple things about the video. You do want a short video. Uh, Logger Pro can take a while to import them if they're like pretty long. Um, the video files that it supports, uh, Logger Pro is a little wonky with this sometimes. Uh, ideally, you have an M .mp4 file. That's what it likes the best. Um, if you're recording on like an iPhone and you have a .mov file, they can be uh, th they don't always work as well. You can try it. Uh, definitely try taking a quick demo video, put it on your computer, import it in and make sure you can see the video first and foremost. If that doesn't work, you might try to record in a different format or if you even have a, a way, if you can find um, like a free online file converter, uh, be careful. Some of those are a little bit sketchy, but uh, if you can find one that works, you know, if you get an MP4 file, you want it to be able to import it. Uh, so here's mine. One Again, one thing you might do is since you're doing five trials, you might record all five trials in one video. You just do want to do them pretty quickly. If you have a video that's like a minute or longer, it's going to take a long time to load into Logger Pro, but it might make your life easier in the long run. So up to you. You can play around with that. But anyway, here's a video of just one trial of the drop. So I, when I import the movie into Logger Pro, it creates this new window for me and it shows me the video. And what I can do is I can go frame by frame through the video by clicking down here. Um, you know, I can play and just watch the short video play out. Oop, there it goes, dropping a coffee filter. Um, so there's a couple things we're gonna look at here that we need to do to set it up. Because what we're essentially gonna do is click to track the motion of the coffee filter um, as it drops. So I'm gonna click these three dots down here. These open the video analysis options. And I'm gonna come over here. So there's a couple different settings. The first thing I think I wanna do is set my scale. So the reason uh, you see me holding a meter stick here is because we need something in the frame to tell Logger Pro, you know, like how long, say, this distance is. It needs to be able to, to translate all these distances. So you want a reference object in your frame. Notice I'm trying to have the meter stick the same distance away from the camera as the coffee filter is. You know, you want those to be roughly the same distance away. If the coffee filter were way forward in the frame, um, you know, it would look, the distances would look different. So make sure that the your reference object is the same distance away from the camera as the thing you're actually tracking. Um, okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna click set scale, the ruler looking thing. And then it just lets me, now what I do is I click and drag a line. I'm gonna do my best to click right at the top of the meter stick and then drag and I get this little green line that forms that starts happening. And I'm gonna to drag to the end of the meter stick. That's about as good as I can do. And then this little dialog pop box pops up and I can put in the distance that that line is. So I'm telling Logger Pro, hey, this is one meter. Uh, all right, one meter is a convenient one. You can record whatever though. You could, you know, if you, if you know something in the frame is like half 50 centimeters, you could put that in. If I knew, I don't know, uh, if I knew like my badge here, if I measured the length of that, I could click and drag this and put in that distance. So any distance you want, it doesn't have to be a meter, but you know, grabbing a meter stick's a really easy way to do it. Okay, now it knows how big everything in the frame is. 
Uh, the other thing I want to do is set an origin. I wanted to know where zero is. It's not always really important. It's not necessarily super important for this one, but it is nice to do. So I'm gonna set an origin and I wanna think about where I want my zero to be. I'm thinking, looking at this thing as it moves, you know, it's definitely gonna have a little bit of a wobble as it, as it goes. Um, I think the best thing to do, looking at the main part of when it's falling, is maybe to look at the bottom of the coffee filter. I think that's what I want to do. That's the point I'm going to be clicking on. So when it hits the ground here, I want to make the ground zero. So I'm going to come to a point in my video where I can like come up with a good origin. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come down here and go set origin. And I'm going to click right down at the bottom of my coffee filter. We'll say there is zero. There's my zero. All right, and then the, these yellow cross here show up to show you that right there is the origin. I like that. Okay, now I wanna you know, frame back to the part of the video I care about, which is where this thing is falling. So whoop, 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 going back in time. Okay, this looks like the start. So I think I wanna start here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on where the bottom of the coffee filter is as it falls. And what Logger Pro will do is it will progress frame by frame and uh, it'll let me um, keep clicking. So I'm clicking this point here, add point. Uh, oops. Add point. And I'm gonna click a point that I wanna track, which is the bottom of the coffee filter. So as best I can, I'm gonna click the bottom of the filter. There we go. And now it moved a frame forward. I'm gonna click again, and click again, and click again, and click again. There are some settings you can mess with here to make this a little easier. So I'm gonna right click and go to movie options. This is one other thing you can do. Um, do make sure that it matches your frame rate. So I recorded this at 60 frames per second, so it looks like it detected that okay. Sometimes it's a little weird, especially if you're doing something fancy like trying to record in slow motion. You do wanna know what the frame rate of your camera is on your phone um, and make sure that you can put that in here. So it's capturing 60 frames per second. Uh, and I want to... I think I can change it. So I can advance the movie one frame after adding a new point. Um, I might do two. I'm gonna say two frames because I think I can get uh, away with not putting as many points on here as it falls. So I'm gonna click the bottom of the coffee filter again. Now moves two frames forward. Click it again, that's two frames forward. You can see the frame count up here. Click again, it's two frames forward. So I'm just gonna click the bottom as best I can now as it falls. And of course, it's not gonna be perfect. Uh, you know, it's getting a little blurry in the middle here, but I can pretty much see where the bottom is. So I'm just trying to kind of carefully click as it falls where the bottom of the coffee filter is every time. All right, and you don't have to pick the bottom. You could always pick, you could pick the top, whatever. Try and pick a point that's easy to click. You know, I'm, I don't wanna pick the middle because that's harder to eyeball. I can kind of see where the bottom edge of the coffee filter is and click that pretty okay. Um, it's not going to be perfect, but I'm trying. I'm trying. Okay. So click. There we go. All right. I got it. It's whole way down. That's what I wanted to do. So it kind of fell more or less like this. Uh, it's pretty cool. I can see, you know, everything that happens over here. And then I'm gonna just click into the, the uh, graph here. I can always right click and say move to back. The, all these things are kind of around, so I'm just moving one in front of the other. So if I just left click, you know, single click on the graph itself. Oh, now I moved it to the back. Uh-oh, accidentally clicked another point. I'm hitting Command Z to undo. Here's one thing you can do too. Uh, the undo takes a while in these videos. All right, one thing you can do too, once you put all your points, if you don't wanna screw up like I just did, you can click this little um, arrow here and then it won't go crazy. It won't add new points when you click. But I'm gonna right click and move my video to the back so it's out of my way. All right, now there's a couple things that it graphs. It basically graphs your position horizontally and the position vertically. We want the position vertically, which is Y. So this is the Y, you know, the height, the Y coordinate of that coffee filter as it fell. That's what I want. Uh, so I can kind of see um, how it fell over time. 
and I'm auto scaling, I'm scaling out. What I want to do is find the terminal velocity. I can definitely see this thing reach terminal velocity, right? It started out kind of flat. Um, I'm going to put a tangent tool on it. We can, we'll do some other tools in a second. But I can see it started off flat uh, in terms of the gradient was zero. It started from rest, speeding up, speeding up, getting steeper. And then eventually it hits a pretty much constant uh, speed at the end here. That's the terminal speed. It should turn into a straight line. What I really want to do is use a bunch of these data points at the end to get a good number for velocity. So what I want to do is highlight the section where I think it's a terminal velocity, which to me looks something like this. My last data point looks a little weird, so I'm going to do this. Those look pretty good to me. That looks like a section with terminal velocity. So I'm going to highlight the section that I think is terminal velocity, click my linear fit, and there we go. I can see a nice straight line. Yeah, that seems good to me. And there we go. My slope here, of course, this is a position versus time graph. It's y position versus time. The slope is the velocity. So that would be my data point, 2.809 meters per second. Um, for this particular lab, I'm going to ignore the negative because I just care about terminal speed. All right, but that's what we want to do to get the terminal speed specifically here. Um, do when you're using video analysis, you really want to pretty much stick to the position versus time graphs. It will graph velocity versus time for you. But the way Logger Pro does that is it's just doing a calculation from the like last two position data points. So you can see the Y velocity is going to jump around a pretty good bit. Um, because it's really just looking at, you know, this, I believe, is just looking at this data point and this data point. So it's not going to get nearly as good a picture as if you get a bunch of data points at the end and can put a straight line on them. This will get a lot of good averaging in there for you. Right, the velocity itself is much funkier. So these are really pretty unreliable unless you're really being, have something super, super controlled. So you always want to stick with your position data only from really even a motion sensor or a video analysis like this. Um, okay, so that's how you can get that position data though. Um, of course, depending on what experiment you're doing, this works well for the coffee filter lab, but you could look at the horizontal position. So, you know, I can see that this thing kind of wobbled around a, a little bit in terms of where it was horizontally um, as it fell. And, uh, you know, you can, you can look at those different things depending on what you need for the lab. But that's the process of putting it in for video analysis. So you can use this as a reference uh, for this lab and any times in the future where you want to take a video and see how something's moving. All right, there you go. Have fun.